This is Rocky Snyder. At the tone, leave your name and message, and I'll get back to you. Hey, Rock, it's me. Uh, I'm tired of running. Can we get some surf, like strength and conditioning, like how to be better on the waves? Thanks, man. I'll check you out later. Bye. <laughs> In today's episode of the Rock Fit Files, we're leaving running behind and jumping in the ocean. We're going to be joining a whole bunch of surfers, and we're going to look at how to improve our balance out there on the waves. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Rocky Snyder, and this is the first episode of the Surf, the Summer Surf Series. And that means that each week we're going to bring you different amazing athletes in the world of surf, as well as stand-up paddle. And today, we've got, of course, some amazing surfers. In fact, right here in our home break, Santa Cruz, we've got the founder of SantaCruzWaves.com and big wave surfer himself, Tyler Fox. Tyler, welcome. There's the man right now. Thank you, (laughs) Pleasure to be here. Dude, so good to have you. How are you doing today? Doing quite well in the backyard. It's about 80 degrees and uh, just trying to get in a little bit of shade here and ready to do a fun little workout with you all. You know, I tried to time it, brother, so that the tide was going to be high right about the time we're doing this. Did you notice that? Thank you. Appreciate You're welcome. It. You're welcome. <laughs> the finest time this morning. I don't know if you woke up early, but I got up and as soon as I walked out the door, that briny kind of quiet smell of a minus tide was hitting and oh man, it was so good. So now we got high tide, things are kind of flattened out, but we got that south swell in the water and things are going to be kind of moving out low tide wise tonight. So as soon as we're done, I got like one more hour of office work and then I'm paddling out. Maybe I'll see you then. Thank you. Sweet. All right. Now on the East coast, we got to have the left and the right coast representing here. Of course, where would we go? But into the, the, the mouth of the lion, the heart of it all for balance and surf training, Indo Board Headquarters. Right in Florida, we've got Hunter Jocelyn and his companion, Corey Howell. Now, Corey is a champion surfer at the same level as Tyler, Tyler, maybe you go for the bigger waves, perhaps. I don't know. Corey, what's the biggest wave you've charged so far? Um, outer reef, 10 foot. Okay. Dog. All right. I like that. That's my comfort zone. A couple feet overhead, and I'm good to go. Mavericks up north. Tyler, just quickly, biggest wave so far you've surfed? Um, it, was, it was towed in down near Monterey, and they measured it at uh, 70 feet. That was ghost tree, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's something me- mentally and medically probably wrong with you, but we'll get that checked out later. Along with Corey Howell in the headquarters of Indoboard is the inventor of the Indoboard himself, Hunter Jocelyn. Hunter, welcome. Thanks, Rocky. God, it's great to work with you again. It's been somewhat 20 years, and I always look forward. You got more energy than a guy half your age, so I'm <laughs> stoked to be here. And this is Indoboard headquarters. I uh, kind of made it into a little gym. I met Tyler Fox years ago when he was a grom like this guy, and now he's bonafide. He's done all the stuff he dreamed of doing. It's great to get back in touch with Tyler, and uh, we'll show him some big wave uh, training stuff. And Corey, you know, Cocoa Beach is known to be the small wave surfing capital of the world. Brought us Kelly Slater and Little Surf, so Corey's one of those guys. You know, we, we've surfed slop chop and every other condition known to man, so we're happy to be here and join you guys out on the West Coast. We're representing all of the USA. I love it. Yes, yeah, slop and chop makes you a better surfer. And eventually, Corey, if you follow along with your, with your fellow Cocoa Beach surfer, you too can open up your amazing surf ranch somewhere in the middle of the valley of the desert of California. Uh, Tyler, have you had the opportunity to go to Kelly's Surf Ranch? Yeah, I surfed it once. It was pretty surreal. Um, perfect wave but uh you know what the the smell of um the ocean and the clean air is is definitely i'd say my favorite over the swell of uh 
you know, manure, which is surrounding the... Yeah, no, yeah. the, the fertilizer plant nearby, I, I went just like, honestly, like 10 days before shelter in place, locked down. My son and I were gifted on a little pass down at Kelly's place. And oh my gosh, it was amazing. But the livestock around the area added a little different flavor. I'll tell you that than, than salt water. Okay, without further ado, we're going to get into this. I've got my Indo board here with, actually I've got the rocker without the stoppers on the side because I, I, I like living on the edge. I've got my Indo flow cushion and my gigante. I just like saying the word gigante. And, and I've got, of course, the roller. Now I do have the Indo Pro, so if we need to get really fancy and get longer with that. And I thought what we could do, just being surfers and loving training, and we all do the Indo board, is we just make this round robin kind of organic workout for the viewing audience. And of course, if you're viewing this now and you wanna see it again, don't worry, we are recording this. So I'm gonna pass it on to Hunter's crew and Tyler's crew, and hopefully it'll flood the airwaves and the internet and you'll be seeing it all over the place. So who wants to go first? Well, let's go from basic, and I don't mean beginner, because by now, anybody watching now hopefully already has an Indo board and they've fallen numerous times. They've read the warning on the board itself that you're doing this at your own risk and you're idiots like us that love to push the boundaries of, of possibility. So let's, instead of going with this simple beginning, let's, let's just jump into intermediate. How does that sound? All right, well, I'm gonna work with Corey here on a little deal that I discovered with him at his house a month ago. And I asked him to get into a tube squat. So one of my basic exercises that I always start with, whatever level, is to analyze stance and posture in a tube squat. All right, and it turned out, Corey, showing what, we, what you started at and what we changed. Okay. So I'll, I'll go into what feels natural to me out of, out of instinct, and then he'll be able to correct me because, as you know, what you feel like and what you look like are often two different things. So, okay, that's kind of where I was. So he was actually, before he was picking this heel up, he's already changed and forgotten. He was coming up on his toe. Now, if your back foot, you're on your toe, then you're, you're inside rail specific. If your foot is down and across the board, now you can use your heel for your outside rail or your inside rail. So what I did was got him, now you see, he let this knee fall in behind the front knee, but this foot is still controlling both rails. His head and shoulders are up. His legs are burning. He's down here for a while. Go ahead and come up and release a little bit. Oh, so, I wanted him down for at least five more minutes. You should have stuck yeah, down there. Yeah. Well, so as he comes down, this knee is going to fall in behind the front knee. So that foot comes over, keeps the head and shoulders up, and he's active. The core is tight. Now, the tendency is to fold over just a touch. And when you fold over just a little bit, you give up that core strength that you get from in here. So you can turn from this posture. You can't turn when you give up that core strength. So a little bit of bend over at the waist is the biggest mistake that I find in Ooh. surfers of all caliber and ages, specifically guys that have been surfing for 20, 30 years. They tend to do this rather than come down, so you watch that. So that's, nice. it's basic, it's advanced, because it's actually helped Corey in what he's doing, getting into a tube squat. And I wanna add one more thing too, with the orientation of the head, and you taught me this recently, it was the hand placement. So if you have your hand, a lot of people wanna get into the barrel and they're leaning this forward to get into it. But if we just take our hand, kind of like right near here, it's going to help keep everything back. We're going to find distance of where the, the wave is placed with us. And wave hitting the hand. And then that will help you feel more in place of where you're at on the board and on the wave at the same time. And the hand placement of the front hand should never go any higher than that. In fact, it should turn down and the thumb comes slightly in and always try to work in here. And a tendency for a lot of people is in here or get back here. 
Come on up. So the aspect of the leading hand coming down by the front foot keeps you in alignment, keeps your shoulders, and keeps the rail, the board in trim, maximum speed. Wow, all right, so that is a massive leg burner. Throw some ice cubes on that, Corey. We're gonna get back to that. Tyler, I, I wanna be, you know, I, it's only polite to, to let all the guests go first. Tyler, what I would like to do is, I, I would like to know what is like your go-to move on the endo board when you're working it, whether it's your warm up, your, your move, whatever you wanna do. Show us what one of your favorite actions is. Well, um... First off, I, I think that what I really like is the fact that they both look goofy foot, right? You guys goofy footed? Right yeah. foot forward. <laughs> I only invite goofy feet on. There, there you <laughs> go. Um, but I would say, uh, secondly, what I like to incorporate is a lot of eye-hand coordination um, drills. And be because when you're on a wave, uh, you're constantly having to adjust uh, watching either surfers in front of you move around them, watching the lip change, uh, you know, everything is constantly changing. So I think that uh, whenever we f work on these balance uh, techniques, we, sh we should try and incorporate um, some sort of moving object uh, as well. So behind me, what I'll do is I'll hop on um, the Indo board and I'm just using a tennis ball and I've got a hard wall behind me. And I'll just show you a couple. I'll just you know, bounce it back and forth and you can um, uh, trade off between, you know, your right hand, left hand. And I'll just show you quickly and then come back to uh, the screen here. But So, tennis ball, anything bouncy works fine. And so I'm just gonna go here. Okay, and I just off the wall. Basically, really easy to find a hard wall. Um, tennis ball works great, and that's just incorporating that eye hand uh, agility within the balance. All right. Well, you just threw down the gauntlet for me because I wanted to follow that up with these babies. These are called Indian clubs. If you're not familiar with them, no, they're not juggling pins. They come in twos typically, and they're all about getting the shoulder girdle to open up. So if you've got some stiff paddle muscles, these clubs are fantastic at not only potentially knocking you unconscious while standing on the board, but really developing some great shoulder mobility. So what I sometimes do is getting on that board, with the clubs in hand, I'm going to start to work on that Indian club action. Now the club itself weighs about one or two pounds. So as I create this circular action, that centripetal force is really kind of throwing me all around and I've got to counteract that. I can get both arms and pretty much, well, you guys are like in the land of Ringling Brothers. So if you want to put in a good word for me down there, oh no, wait a minute, they closed down. Never mind. So with the Indian clubs, I can get a whole bunch of different movements going on here. And at the same time, really just keep on working my balance with it. All right. There's my 30 seconds of fame and showing off. Hunter, I saw you moving on that board, brother. What do you got for us? Well, uh, Corey, jump over there and get me the net ball on the rope. Okay, I just want to point out that this is not like trying to one better. And Tyler, I, I wasn't trying to make it anything better than yours because yours was awesome. Actually, I love the tennis ball. And Hunter, I just want you to let you know that this, we don't have to elevate this until the end of the hour and suddenly we're doing like headstand spinning and stuff on your board, okay? Yeah. Well, I really love this. I mean, med ball work. You know, remember when we did our medicine ball uh, game back 20 years ago and I, I crushed you and you were just dumbfounded. Oh, it's so weird. I, I don't I don't remember it that way. But it's okay. <laughs> so talk about rotational stuff. Corey, you might want to duck. You might want to duck, brother. <laughs> so this is a great challenge to stay centered, not to flip or fly, and then try to get to one end and not settle it down. But 
it's just a game. I'm playing a game with myself. Can I spin this and balance and move the endo board while I'm doing the spin? Yeah, this is a probably a good time to say that exercises like these, before attempting anything like this, it's always a good idea to consult your primary care provider. Back to you, Hunter. <laughs> so the quality of this exercise is found completely in the core. Now, if we want to take it to the next level, then we're going to go. <laughs> I'm going to change the rotation as the ball comes up. Oh, try to keep from touching the ground. And here it all starts. Breathing is real important. So that was kind of off. I want to get into a good, powerful squat. <laughs> anyway. Wow. All right. Obviously, you stay up late thinking of these things, and you probably keep a little notepad by your bedside table. Uh, Tyler, there's no need to break out the sledgehammer, brother, but if you want to give us maybe a plank maneuver or something, like when you have, I'm sure you do some indoor board action when you're in kind of like a plank or push up position, I imagine. Do you? I won't, I won't even do it because. Um, um, He's doing it on his screen there. So Corey's operating with wide feet apart. So we have three options, right, Tyler? Yeah, yeah. Take it from here. I mean, you guys got it. I'll, I'll save my ankle and let you guys go, go through some of those core stabilizations. Okay, because he's got his feet are now together. And that's more difficult. So you've got three levels. If your feet are wide like you started with, it's easier. This is, depending on your skill, this is the easiest mode with your feet wide. Then you come in a little bit closer. It's a little bit harder. Then he comes in, brings his feet together. Now the board's kind of going to slide a little bit on the roller, just slide it back. And so now you can change aspects. One of the things for paddling is to turn the board semi sideways and then stay balanced <laughs> so change that plank either side i mean this is really getting advanced because that's difficult Very i love it so really let's boil down the concepts of what we've just done we've put you in a standing position and we've gotten you down into your legs while the upper body was staying relatively still and then we changed that up and we became relatively still in the lower body while the arms are either playing catch with a tennis ball, swinging an Indian club, or a medicine ball on the end of a rope. All of those really worked on upper body mechanics while the lower body stayed stable. So Corey, if you go back into that plank position, I would like you to encourage, instead of keeping the board level, as you go back and forth, I would like to do what's called perturbate, to perturb all the shoulder area. And I would like you to try and do the same thing while making the board wobble back and forth because a lot of people get the indoor board and they're trying to keep it still all the time. But there's another aspect that we can do, which is perturbate the shoulders. So give us a shot on that because I don't want Tyler's ankle blown out because then he won't save me some waves when we paddle out later. And what I'm gonna add to, I'm gonna do it the other way this time so you can see my feet. But when I like to do the close narrows um, plank, I'm actually um, pushing my heels together and that's gonna initiate more of a core interaction or integration versus keeping, um, a lot of people like to do the toes together instead of the heels, so. So he's using the board and kind of walking it up and walking it back. The board is going to move, so you just incorporate that into what the exercise is. Don't keep fighting because the board's moving, just move with the board. Woo! <laughs> there we 
here's your ultimate pop up is the land on the deck. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that was a good workout. Not bad at all. Yeah. So I want to come back to the roller with the board on top, but for many of the endo board users, they've got the cushion as well. And maybe we can just change channels for a second and talk about the cushion. Now we've got a couple of them, right? We've got the, the endo flow cushion and we've got the gigante, the, the larger one. And for a lot of my clients, surfers or non-surfers, I will really encourage them to just do a little bit of single leg balance where their foot is in the center. Can they come up and maintain some semblance of a relaxed body? And then from here, can they just drop into like a backstepping lunge, driving on up and then coming back down? I can do the same thing from a lateral aspect, which is going to be a little bit more challenging because now I've got to work on foot mechanics we call inversion and eversion. And can I maintain this position coming from a side shifting action? So just a couple of things. Now I know Tyler, you've got yourself an endo flow cushion too. I'm curious, how do you use that in concert with the board? I think people should start off with just the simplest baseline, right? So just one foot balancing is, is crucial before we get into this advanced stuff. Cause the last thing we want to do is hop on these things and possibly get injured. But, um, you know, some of the things I like to do is um, the, the exact same thing I was doing earlier. Stand on, um, on the cushion with the stabilization on top, like a board on top. And then once again, use a tennis ball or something that, that can bounce and bounce something against the wall while, while uh, you know, balancing on that one foot. Um, so I think maybe, Rocky, if you could, you know, even use those, I forgot what they're, the name of them again, but stand on that with one foot and then go through their motion. So you're working on that, like one leg. Cause a lot of times we have a dominant leg and then a, a weaker leg. So it's really good to even those out. I couldn't agree more. So uh, honestly, we are trying to start with simple mechanics and then add subtle complexities on it. Now we're kind of, we're trying not to present to the lowest common denominator in the room necessarily. If you're new to Indo board, obviously consult the, the information literature that comes along with your Indo board. There's a DVDs out there, of course, YouTube channels, but don't try the complex movements before you learn to walk, right? Don't run before you walk. So getting a sense of how you feel on the board, single leg, both legs, getting an understanding of how you can move your body up and down are key before trying some of the stuff that uh, Corey, Tyler, myself, and Hunter are showing you here. So Hunter and Corey, you guys have the flow cushions there, I see. What do you guys do on those? Well, uh, what I want to show is I have three lined up here. I don't know, with the depth of the television, you can see I've got three levels of inflation. Now, the beauty of the Gigante cushion and the Indo Flow cushion is the ability to change the amount of air. And I, I, to save some time, I've got three different ones with three different levels of air, so I'm not blowing them up and all. But the beauty of the product is that you can change the level and the intensity by how much air is in it and somewhat different than the, the way our minds work. When I have very little air in the Higate, I get more subtle balance movement. So I'm working harder to maintain my balance on this cushion with a little bit of air. I've got about three and a half, four breaths of air in this one, and I'm getting a lot of movement. Nothing up here, but if you can see my ankles and feet, it, it never stops. So this one's got another two and a half breaths in it. I'm a little higher. I've got a little more stability because I'm compressing the air, okay? So when I have it very lightly filled, there's, there's not enough air to compress, so it's really giving me that subtle imbalance. Then I go to the third one, which has, a, it takes about 12 breaths to fill a Gante so this one's got about nine breaths. I could really get it up about this high, but I don't want to do that. But as you see now, I'm much higher, but the air is compressing 
it's not nearly as difficult. So we have progressions just by changing the amount of air. And so what you can do, obviously one of my favorite exercises all day long, every day, is a squat. I might want to point out at this point in time that Hunter is the recipient of two hip prosthesis. He's had two hip replacements. How long ago was that, Hunter? I had the, this total was done two years ago, and this was a resurfacing was done 10 years ago. So I, I, I'm a metal detector flare. Go through the air, boom, come over here. What do you got going on there? Not to mention I got a meniscus tear in each knee. I've got a torn ligament in my left ankle. So, you know, don't get old because all this stuff just keeps coming with you. But it's all about the full squat and trying to keep the head and shoulders up. A lot of people get into this and that takes away from what you can do here. And this is a better form. Now, speaking of form, Hunter, the traditional gym squat where the barbell, we sometimes call the back squat or parallel squat, it's different mechanics than doing a squat on the endo board, isn't it? Correct, because we're, we're compensating for the fact we're on board and we're moving. You know, the, the traditional squat is definitely to make sure that the knees don't go beyond the toes. And I'm pretty close to that, but because of the angle that we're changing, like when we're on the surfboard, we're literally tilted a little bit, right? We're not, the board's not just a bit flat. So that's why this gets into here and not in here to try and keep the knees from being over there. So when we're surfing, we're, our knees are right even with our toes right in there. So it's all about posture. I mean, I, what I teach primarily, balance, posture, and breathing. And breathing is a whole nother chapter, but the, the mechanics of putting those three together, they all go hand in hand. Definitely. Now, I, you, Corey, you brought in a Grom to kind of bring on the scene and make us feel just uh, how young we all are, I'm sure. But who, who do you got in the studio there? Cairo, come, come over here. So we got Cairo. He, is, he was just on American Ninja Warriors Juniors series. And so Cairo is an avid uh, surfer, shredder, shreds every kind of board. And so this is like a prime person where we want to get on the endo board and it's going to really boost his cross training abilities up to the maximum. All right, Corey, do you want to show us what you would do with your team of Groms using the endo board? For sure. Okay. So first off, I want to make sure he can um, rock from side to side to so go ahead and get on and go on with Cairo. And what we want to do is get a feel for the end of where the roller is positioned with the board. So I tell them, go from side to side, make sure that the roller stays in between both of your feet. And um, go straight ahead. And then just try to feel the roller going from left foot to right foot. Nice and slow and in control. Not a lot of people get on there and it'll look like a crazy roller coaster ride. So we want to tone that down, get some control aspect into that. And then from here, we can work on the barrel stance. So we want to go ahead and get a little Cairo. There you go. It's looking good. And so we would try to just fix it up a little bit and squeeze that core and make sure you get nice and stable. Perfect. Okay. Spread his feet a little bit. Okay, spread his feet a little bit. Yep. We want to go straight down. Drop the feet. Okay, now just start to drop that butt a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. Look where you're going. All right, so this hand. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring the, uh, the center of gravity right under the feet. So we're going to bring the head backwards and actually start to drop in with the glutes. So we're picture the sacrum and the lumbar spine just dropping straight down over the board. And that's going to give us that stability that we want. Yeah, what I typically notice when people are doing the endo board, if we were to drop a plumb line right down from the center of their head, more often than not, it stays wherever the roller is. So if the roller subtly goes to the left, the head kind of moves left and right. It may have some to do with our re writing reflexes, our vision and vestibular system, where we gain most of our balance from. If we can keep that head right over the roller, the body moves all over and underneath it, you're still going to maintain that nice semblance of, of uh, vertical loading and 
and balance right over that roller. Would you agree? I agree. And plus, whenever you're in that optimum uh, posture, you're going to be able to move out of these tricky situations of maybe I'm over here, but then once I gain posture, I can cross step out of it or I can um, find the correct posture again very easily without compensating and then just tipping over because I'm not engaged in the proper mechanics. Right on. Now, Tyler, I, I remember a few years ago, you were doing a lot of surf coaching with young up and coming surfers. Is that still occurring? Well, um, I'm going to be starting a, a, like a youth waterman's camp here pretty soon. That's going to incorporate a lot of things. It's going to incorporate balance, um, a lot of ocean safety, swimming, um, life-saving techniques. So um, that should be coming up here pretty soon in the Santa Cruz area. Um, okay. And, and how do people find out about that? Because that sounds fantastic. Yeah, I, I would say people can just um, all, all uh, post some updates on my Instagram uh, under Zorro, Zorro Del Mar um, or Santa Cruz Waves. Um, and yeah, just trying to get more um, – because unfortunately, the junior lifeguard programs here in town due to the whole pandemic, you can't have so many people crowded together. So they're going to be smaller classes – um that um yeah there's a lot of a lot of ripping kids in here and uh but i think um not 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 just being able to surf well i think there's there's so much more to being a real well-rounded uh ocean person definitely definitely and so i uh, back into florida and into the headquarters of indoboard what are you guys doing there i can just make out a few things so we're, Hunter's describing to Tyra that just like um, the growing epidemic really is that forward head posture, roll of the shoulders, just in this texting, watching TV, sitting a bunch of time. And so we're working on drawing the shoulders back, but also down. And then that way we can start to make that change to where it, it doesn't have to stick with us for the rest of our lives. I got you. So essentially, again, kind of reinforcing exactly what Tyler was bringing up previous to this is that getting the basics down is really essential when you're talking about advancing on to better and more advanced mechanics with the endo board, making sure you have proper motor control and flexibility and the ability to, to move in different dimensions of space while on an unstable surface. So then from there, the next progression may be, but doesn't have to be, adding some resistance in some form or other, uh, such as, I noticed there are some dumbbells on the floor there. And Hunter, what, what do you typically do from a basic to more advanced standpoint? I changed from what uh, I was doing before because you brought it to my attention that I'm in the same plane all the time, right? I can do reverse curls. So I've decided that I do a set of regular curls and then I do so I'm getting that rotation, I'm getting that real good core work. Is that what you were talking about before? That's really nice. Yeah, in, in the movement world, there's three dimensions of space. We call them planes of motion. One plane separates you from left and right. And if you go along that plane, you go into flexion extension. That's called the sagittal plane. There's another plane that separates us from front to back, like the seam in your pants or something. And if we go along that plane, we go into side bending or what we call adduction and abduction. And then, of course, you just demonstrated the transverse plane, which goes kind of cuts us from top to bottom. And if we move along that plane, that's rotation. So we can, in fact, take a movement like you just demonstrated, a bicep curl, which is now traveling along the sagittal plane. We can take it across into a rotational action with the transverse plane. We can also take it out to our side in the frontal plane. And in surfing, we go through all three planes of motion making that speed down the line, you can see there's this side bending, but there's this rotation and flexion and extension, compressing on the bottom of the turn and extending as you're coming up toward the lip. 
So any of these kind of three-dimensional movements we can start to feed into your balance routine may very well carry over onto your wave riding experience. So with uh, Corey, you told us before the show began, you are in chiropractic college at, at the Palmer College of Chiropractic Medicine in Florida. And to talk about balance and alignment, this must be a, a kind of a, a unique experience using the Indo board with, with that knowledge base. How, how, do you, how do you kind of just filter all that information together and, and make, it, uh, make it something that's enjoyable, but also informative at the same time? Really, I just get on there and I find my deficiencies. I find, as a competitor, I like to be the best I can possibly be. And also, if I can beat others on the way, that's even better for my, how, how I feel. And now, with the end of war, I'm playing a game with myself. I'm finding these areas where I'm not as good as I want to be. And so I will focus on that trick, or I'll focus on that posture. And I'll continue to work on it until I got it. But once I got it, I'm going to progress it to that next level. And whenever I get on the end of board now, I just chain all those tricks together. And that way, it's a never-ending process. I never get bored. I can do whatever comes to my mind. And I kind of have free range of training, which keeps it fun for me. And it keeps it, keeps it fun for people that want to train with me as well. So That's what, fantastic because this brings up exactly what I was, I was hoping to chat about. In my world, we call it the dark zones. The places that your body doesn't readily travel, the places that you're not accustomed to moving, and therefore the brain doesn't necessarily know how to control the muscles and the joints to move in these areas that you may not comfortably go in. So to try and experience those places that the body is having a struggle moving into is a great gift for your body and your brain. And so how this kind of carries over into surfing is that we are typically regular foot or goofy foot. And when we go out for a session, yes, we can switch stance, but we're always going to gravitate toward one or the other. So when it comes to the end of board training, what I really enjoy doing is trying to put myself in a regular foot stance as often as possible for this goofy foot frame so that I can start to experience the awkwardness and trying to make it less awkward, trying to get the places that I don't readily travel into. I'm Tyler. Do you, you're goofy foot as well, right, brother? Oh, you're a good man. So do you do a lot of regular foot or not even on the Indo board, but it, it would be cool to, to learn about that. But um, do you do a lot of opposites for your training, especially getting ready for the big swell in the winter? Yeah, I think, you, I think you're really on to something there. And, and I think not just with balance and um, switching stances, but um, also for, for the brain and kind of exercising the different sides of the brain. Um, you know, we always, a lot of us brush our teeth with our right hand, right? Well, you ever tried brushing your teeth with your other hand and it's so awkward and weird, but that is actually a good challenge for your brain firing new um, receptors and, and, and just getting you to think differently. So I think it totally translates into physical activity as well using the other side of the body, using a, uh, if you have a dominant leg, focusing on your, your undominant leg, your weaker leg or your weaker arm, um, just to keep your body more balanced overall. Good points. Okay, so speaking of that, I, I was looking at so what they're doing back in Indo Board headquarters and it looked like Corey was dropping into almost like a single leg squat of some sort. Corey, do you go into a regular stance? I, I take it you are goofy, was that correct? Correct, yeah. So I was just um, practicing what Tyler was talking about. Doing that pistol squat on my left leg because I feel I'm right leg dominant. And, and it, what is that like in terms, of, in terms of your ability to do that? It's not going to be as much as your dominant side. And so uh, I know a lot of times people will do uh, 10 repetitions on the left leg, 10 repetitions on the right leg, and they're expecting those imbalances to help correct each other. But uh, I, I don't find that happening in the years that I've been training. I actually become more biased on the non-dominant leg to try and build up strength and coordination so we do have a balance. So do you find that the same with your training? Do you have a tendency to, to gravitate toward the less dominant leg to bring things up? I agree with you completely. Because like I said, whenever I've, I find an area that I'm not as good as I want to be at, 
I'm going to make sure I work towards getting that skill level up. Right on. Okay, so show off a little bit for us, and let me see that pistol squat because I don't think anybody saw it on the screen. The beauty of this is you can switch stance, stand goofy foot. Okay. Now all he's got to do is look that way and switch his orientation. Now he's regular foot, and all he's done is just go. I'm goofy foot. Now I'm regular foot, and it's all very quick. What? Or you can move around and pivot. There's several different ways, but it's a very simple transition to switch stance and always work on your weak side. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So I'm going to get into the, the pistol squat. It's been a favorite among the end of board family. So I will find that roller. And the big key with this is to keep leverage with the board. So you don't want to be stuck on this metal or not metal, the, um, the wood stopper. So you want to create a little bit of space so you have some playroom for the, the tail to move. And so I position the roller directly under my foot. You get there one second. Okay. Now simply just balance with the leg straight out in front of me. Once I find that, that focus energy of mine, then I'll drop that heel straight to the ground. And then I'll scoop under. I can grab the foot or I can just push straight through and come back up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, so, recovery, oh, that was nice. Thank you, I well, worked him. <laughs> oh, this has been epic. I, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna kind of bring everything into kind of wrapping up this gift you guys have all given me. Tyler, I'm gonna go to you first. You've been doing some amazing work in our community. So first of all, I just wanna thank you for everything you do within and outside the surf community. With Santa Cruz Waves, you guys, when this all sheltered in place came up, you guys actually blossomed and, and came forth and really helped the community in terms of local businesses like mine, featuring local businesses, encouraging consumers to go and support us. So first, from my heart, thank you for what you're doing, but I wanna give you just an opportunity to promote everything that is Santa Cruz Waves and Tyler Fox. How can people find out more information? Where should they go and what should they do? Well, thank you very, very much, Rocky. And, um, you know, right back at you. you. You guys are doing awesome things there. And um, I think right now, um, you know, people can subscribe to our magazine, go to santacruzwaves.com. There's a subscribe button. It is a free magazine. So you may be asking, why would I subscribe to a free magazine? Well, a lot of our advertisers for obvious reasons are just unfortunately not able to continue to advertise. Um, so with the help of, yeah, our readers, um, it basically breaks down to $6 an issue um for a, an, an annual subscription Fair, fairly uh fairly cheap there and um yeah just to continue to follow us and, and shop local you know shop within the um community that's that's what's uh really keeping everyone alive and and, and i think that's what'll get us through this so is yeah right on, man thank you so much and another reason why i subscribe to santa cruz waves magazine is just so i can drool over some epic surf shots and not just santa cruz surf alone but we've got ourselves a fair share of drool worthy breaks around here all right back to the right coast with hunter and corey and your grom fest going on there you guys corey uh tell me a little bit about well, I know two-time national champion with the NSSA. What is it that you're doing these days? And if people want to find out more about you, I know I went to YouTube and saw some amazing videos. Just search for Corey Howell and you'll get a whole bunch of surf shots who are amazing. And then from Corey, let's go to Hunter and find out more about if somebody wants to, uh, I know inventory is low these days, but if somebody wants to order an indoor board, how do you do that? You go, guys. Okay, so first off, I'll start with uh, thank you very much for having us on here. First of all, it's been awesome connecting with you guys and talking about balance training and how it relates to other sports. Um, for me right now, I'm focusing a lot on my mobility. I'm doing a lot of what's called DNS training, dynamic neuromuscular stabilization. I'm also incorporating gymnastica natural because I'm figuring that whenever I find my points of contact, whether it be on the ground and I'm doing like rolling maneuvers or I'm on the endo board and I'm positioning my feet in relation to the roller, 
I'm finding that that's very important for finding my center of gravity. And lastly, I'm just making sure that I, I do something to help my body every day, whether that's for me, since I'm a chiropractic student, I'm working a lot with um, other people and doing all different types of therapy. And it's just taking that moment out of the day to work on myself as an athlete and also someone who's educating the public. Because if I'm not taking care of myself, it's gonna be hard to carry that on to other people. And so I practice what I preach. That's what, that's what I focus on every day. Right on. And Hunter, my brother from another mother, it is always a pleasure to kind of collaborate with you. You've always got some good stuff to share. I love having you on. If people want to get themselves an endo board, they're not coming to my facility because these things are worth more than gold these days. I'm sure there's a few left in your warehouse. How can they get them? Endoboard.com. We're down there, I think, our last 100 pieces. We're just about out this weekend. Uh, it was a big hit. I'll be out by Friday. I know that for sure. But, uh, Fantastic, man. Well, you guys, Fox. go ahead, Hunter, what are you saying? Let me show Tyler Fox. You saw me standing on this. We put the small cushion on top of the Higante and again, play with the inflation levels. And this is what I was telling you. Now also the width of the deck changes. So the narrower the deck, the harder it is. So we got a wider one. It's a little more stable over here and it's a little lower, less air. So the beauty, you saw how much I was working and balancing that. That's the drop. It yeah. Everything's firing. So I, I love it. Now, how would you, that looks, that looks difficult. How would you recommend people get onto that? <laughs> you put, get it centered so it's flat and straight. Put your foot and touch the ground. I'm totally, you know, I'm safe. Okay. So I'm going to come up. It's a little awkward at first because this is really moving. So I'm going to come and press, nose press, and find my balance. So you see this back knee is following in behind the front knee. My basic surfing posture right in here. And it's, you know, here we are. We're dropping down the face with a big wave. This is what your body's doing, right? You you're, making it, you're making it look too easy. Yeah, well, I, I'm practicing. <laughs> See, now, I would have just done a bomb drop off of Corey's shoulders. I had no idea you could step on it. That's, that's lost on me. All right. Well, you guys, you guys are awesome. I really want to thank you for kicking off this summer surf series with the Rockfit Files. Tyler Fox with SantaCruzWaves.com. Be sure to look him up and subscribe to that free magazine. That sure would be nice. And, of course, Hunter Jocelyn the founder and inventor of the Indo board himself, master, balance master, and uh, Corey Howell. You guys, thanks for coming, being on the show, and we'll get you on again somewhere down the road for sure, because this sure was a lot of fun. You guys have a great day, and be sure to come back next week for the next episode where we have some amazing surfers giving their advice on how to stay healthy, follow your passion, and ride the waves. Take care. But when it comes to balance, you may not consider the eyes being a big deal, but actually they are the biggest deal. When it comes to knowing where we are in space, 70 to 90% of the stimuli we receive from our external environment comes through our eyes. So if our eyes aren't sending the right signals to the brain, the brain could very well be compromised and then that would also compromise its ability to maintain the body's ability to balance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over three drills that could very well help improve your balance. The first thing we wanna do is establish a baseline as to what your balance really is all about. Now, a nice little assessment would be to just stand with your feet underneath you and get a sense of as you stand there, how difficult is it or how easy is it to balance? If it's very difficult and you find yourself wavering all over, you could always step out a little bit wider and see what that's like. If you find that with your feet underneath you that was not so difficult, well you can bring your feet all the way together, making the base of support underneath your body that much smaller. If you're one that has pretty good balance but just wants to improve it to another level, well then this may not be challenging enough and we may want to see what is it like to balance on one foot. 
As you balance on one foot, get a sense of the fact that the foot, is it wavering back and forth? Is the ankle moving back and forth? Is everything relaxed? Do you find yourself tensing up and having to maintain balance, but you're fighting it? Or is everything relaxed? Just get a general sense of what is it like to balance over one foot? But you also might want to get a sense of what is it like to balance over the other foot? Do you start to feel yourself just kind of waver around a little bit more than the other side? If that is the case, then we're going to use the foot that is more challenging to balance upon as the baseline. And for those that wanted to just stay with your feet together and you felt yourself wavering also, well, this might be a good baseline for you. Wherever you're going to feel slightly challenged, that's what we're going to use as something to come back to to determine whether or not these drills are effective. So, one drill that we want to work on is your ability to focus on things close up as well as far away. Because primitively speaking, when we were back in the days of the caveman, we really needed to know if what we were seeing out there was food or if it wanted us to be food. So was it predator or prey? We needed to recognize this quite readily. And if we didn't, we didn't really survive all that long. So in terms of our survival, it was very critical to be able to focus on things close and far away. In today's world of technology, most things are very close to us. Screens are inches away, and depending upon how much screen time you have through the day, you may just be fixated on things that are very close to you, so you lose touch with things far off in your environment. So, the first drill is called the near-far drill. And all you'll simply need is a book. Because within that book, there's a whole bunch of words. And I'm just going to find some words on the pages that I can read clearly and I don't have to extend it out too far but just at normal reading length. Then I'm going to locate somewhere further away some words either on a billboard, on a poster, in a wall or wherever the case may be that I can see those words and I can read them and they're legible and clear and concise lettering. So I'm going to do this just for about 30 seconds. I'm going to read two or three words from the book and then look up and read two or three words far away. Two or three words at the book, two or three words far away. And just back and forth, I will go for about 30 seconds. After that time, we're just going to reassess. What is it like to balance over that leg? Did it get easier? Or did it get harder? Most likely it's going to be one or the other. If balancing got easier, well, we know that that was the drill that helped improve your ability to balance. If it got harder, it could have been that, one, that was not a drill that your body was really into at that moment, or it could have been you did it too hard, or you were going back and forth too quickly. So you may want to try it again and then reassess your balance to see did that improve. Now, another one we could do is called eye spirals because I want to be able to track objects that are moving toward me as well as moving away. So in this case, I'm just going to use this pen cap right here and I'm going to stare at the pen cap. And as I start with my arm extended outward, I'm going to make big circles while staring at this pen cap. And as the pen gets closer to me, the circles get smaller and smaller until it comes all the way toward the tip of my nose. And then I'm going to go back outward, making those spirals, paying attention to always stare at the tip of the cap. From there, I'm going to challenge or test my balance once again. A better response for me with this one. Much more better balance on this right leg. So that's an actually a really nice exercise for me. Now, a third movement or a third drill to improve your balance we call saccades. And that is, well, a reflexive saccade would be if you're in a room and suddenly somebody or a bird, say, flies past the window or somebody walks past the window, you instinctively look over to the movement that just occurred. Because any movement in our field of vision, we don't know what that is, primarily speaking, primitively speaking. It could be a prey or predator. So we want to be sure that any movement that comes into our field of vision, we lock onto and recognize for what it is. So 
in that regard, what we're going to be doing are just having our thumb out here by our side that we can see both thumbs with both eyes. And I'm going to lock onto one thumb and then quickly look over to the other thumb and then lock onto the one on the right and then the one on the left. I'm going to keep my head still and not turn my head, but just use my eyes. And as soon as I see one thumb, I go to the other, go to the other. We do that for maybe about 15 to 20 seconds. Check your balance. Well, now I'm starting to waver here. That was a little bit too much for me. It's interesting. You wouldn't think that drills like this would greatly affect your balance until you actually try them. You're going to find some that improve your balance and some that actually deteriorate or decrease your ability to balance. It doesn't mean that those are bad drills, the ones that decrease your balance. It means that it was a lot more stimuli than you were really ready for. And now, it may not get you breathing heavy and sweating profusely, but if you find yourself being stressed by these exercises, you might find your body temperature increase. You might find yourself blinking or tearing up. You may find yourself gripping with your hands or muscles tightening up. You definitely would have a limited range of motion compared to before doing those drills. There's a whole bunch of ways that the body's going to respond if it feels like that was too much. So what you're gonna do for now is out of those three drills, choose the one, two, or all that gave you the best benefit, that gave you the best balance. Now remember, down in the bottom right screen, you'll see that little dark red rectangular subscribe button. If you like this video and you wanna see more, just click on that and any new video comes your way, it'll be emailed and give you an alert to it. Let me know how this goes and good luck with your balance. Mm -hmm.